Last week we showed you the extraordinary history of the Salton Sea. Tonight we're diving into the environmental disaster and health crisis at California's largest lake. As California grapples with drought conditions, the use of water and how life is sustained is increasingly scrutinized. As morning anchor Angela Chin reports, some experts believe we are ecologically at the brink of collapse from what the Salton Sea used to support. I am in beautiful downtown Palm Springs, just an hour away from the Salton Sea. Let's see what people can tell us about it. Dead and dry. Sad. Dead fish, a little bit of pollution. Smelly. There was dead <laughs> fish. Oh, I haven't heard of the Salton Sea. Where's it at? Ask any Californian and they'll tell you about the breathtaking beauty of Lake Tahoe or the dizzyingly good times at Lake Havasu. But ask about the Salton Sea and you'll likely get this. It stinks. California's largest lake starts at the southern end of the Coachella Valley, and it's unlike any lake you've seen before. 35 miles long with mesmerizing views, big enough to nearly swallow up the entire Coachella Valley. Look all you want, but don't touch. People and pets are being urged to avoid the water at the Salton Sea due to a toxic algae outbreak. In late April, the California State Water Resources Control Board announced harmful cyanobacteria blooms had been discovered there and that a dog had died after swimming in the water. Not even boiling or filtering Salton Sea water would make it safe. This latest bit of news only shores up what most people already believe about the Salton Sea, that it's dirty, smelly, a place where some things go to die. And the sand here isn't your typical California beach sand. Look at this. This is your ultimate calf and thigh workout. This is all dead barnacle, by the way. So you're going to sink into it as you walk along. Below the barnacle, clay, jelly, with a smorgasbord of bacteria and chemicals from agricultural runoff and sewage water from Mexico. As the lake recedes, dust from the exposed toxic soil below, rich with farm pesticides, increases. It contains uh, levels of um, heavy metals, arsenic, selenium, copper, DDT. And when these elements, you know, become airborne, it has the potential to go through your uh, lungs and your bloodstreams and even change your DNA. Ruiz citing this preliminary study by UCR. But years ago, the lake was teeming with life. Herons, pelicans, even flamingos. More than 400 species of birds could be spotted grazing along the water. Today, the National Audubon Society says more than 150 of those species are gone, especially the bigger ones. A more toxic lake means fewer fish, which means more birds starving to death. If you're visiting for the first time, this place might not seem so bad, but then you look down and you find a tire there, and at other spots, a dead bird. Up to 95% of California's wetlands have been destroyed for human use. I also see uh, a few shovelers there. Tracking the birds these days is Frank Ruiz with National Audubon, who wears these sort of snowshoes because of how slimy the shore is. It's like quicksand. He's on a monthly outing collecting water samples to see how salinity is changing oxygen levels in the water, which affects whether fish and other creatures can survive in the lake. As the lake continues to shrink, it's becoming more saline, that eventually the salinity will become so thick that it will trap all the evaporation. So you're not, uh, the sound sea will not lose as much water, but at that point it's gonna be so brine, so salty, that probably bacteria will be the only thing that will live there. In the past 16 years, the lake has become almost 66% saltier. The sea is now more than twice as salty as the Pacific Ocean in some parts. It's also drying up at a rapid pace. Four years ago, it was still connected. You're saying the water connected all the way? Connected to the marina. So four years ago, we couldn't walk across, you know, this little stretch because there was water right here. The water is disappearing for two reasons. One, the Imperial Irrigation District had been streaming enough water in through farm runoff to maintain the lake levels, but that stopped in 2017 because of a water transfer agreement that redirected water to San Diego and other cities. So that water to replenish the lake was taken away. Two, climate change. Scorching, record-breaking temperatures are leading to faster evaporation at the lake. 
The Salton Sea is basically a bowl of water that, with time, gets more concentrated with salt and other questionable things. For decades, the lake's main refill source has been agricultural runoff. There is a cautionary tale. Owens Lake near Death Valley is a dried up lake bed environment, now the largest man-made source of hazardous dust in the nation. LA has spent more than $1 billion trying to suppress the dust, but it's still a disaster with hazardous dust levels 10 times the acceptable standard. And here's the thing, Owens Lake is much smaller than the Salton Sea. Dust coming off of Salton Sea Playa is significantly more toxic than regular desert dust. People are getting sicker over the last couple years because there is more exposed playa. Already we're seeing the effects of the exposed playa in the surrounding towns. Sometimes um, does my throat starts hurting when, when I start breathing. Josh, Angel, and Alexis live in Mecca and have been told their entire lives to go inside when the dust kicks up. Sometimes it's a blinding storm. I used to play soccer a lot, but my parents told me to stop playing too often because that's when um, I start breathing heavily. Josh and Angel have asthma, something families around the Salton Sea are used to seeing. BM10, a minute dangerous particle, can be found in the exposed lake bed and dust here. There's very fine dust particles, and the surrounding community already has the highest pediatric asthma hospitalization rate in the whole state of California. The rate of asthma hospitalizations for kids living at the southern end of the lake is more than double the state. A USC study shows a whopping 35% of elementary school children here have breathing issues. The number of good air days continue to disappear. When I used to live here, I had maybe more of a, a coughing in the morning or dry, you feel dryness here. Politicians and water officials have historically been reluctant to spend the time and money fixing this. And to be fair, it is a mass undertaking to figure out how to get more water into the Salton Sea. But they have had decades and millions of dollars poured into this over the years with, so far, little to show for it. There hasn't been a lot of accountability. The cost of doing nothing could be as much as 70 billion lost dollars from healthcare bills, worsening air quality, property devaluation, and the loss of valuable ecological habitat. While the birds and fish die, for Alexis, the oldest brother, the answer is escape. I find a good job so I could get um, me and my family out of this place if we can. At the Salton Sea, Angela Chen, News Channel 3. Yeah. We were going there reporting on bird die-offs in the mid-90s, and everyone, Democrats, Republicans, everyone has agreed it's a looming environmental disaster, and yet there it sits. And we've talked about this. We were just talking about the haboobs that we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, basically sandstorms. We didn't see early on in the 90s, but we've seen several of them in the 2000s. The dust is getting worse. And think about this. The predominant winds go the other way, so Imperial County deals with it much more often than we do. It is important to keep in mind the areas around the Salton Sea do have good air days as well, but when it is bad, it can be really bad. As for the wildlife, well, for the last century, the Salton Sea has been a bird oasis. Birds migrating from the north use the Salton Sea as a rest stop along the Pacific Flyway, which is why the growing toxi toxicity of the lake is alarming. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday night for part three of this series. Angela Chen will investigate why past projects have stalled and why millions of dollars spent on the Salton Sea have not led to visible results. Watch Troubled Waters, the Salton Sea Project, a lake languished next Wednesday at 6 right here on News Channel 3. And if you missed part one, Paradise Lost from last week, head to our website, KESQ.com. There you can uh, find the report in its entirety. You can also see an interactive timeline which breaks down the history of the Salton Sea.